What's going on, guys? Matt Wyke, Fit Business, here with Jimmy Mentis and special guest. So honored to have him on. It's Josh Shaw of J. Shaw Consulting. He is a CPG strategist, one of the best in the industry. Uh, it's it's truly an honor to have you on, Josh. I appreciate it. This is uh, it's exciting. I, I'd be glad to talk to you guys about anything you want to talk about, but hopefully we can get into some good insights on this uh, podcast. Absolutely. So why don't why don't we kick things off, Josh? Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what you do in the industry, what you do with your business, just for the people who really don't know who you are yet. Yeah. So as you guys said, I mean, a strategist, I'm a business consultant. So similar to um, most like management consultants work in industries that are much bigger. Uh, so I'm not like a broker. Some people kind of confuse broker with with consultant, but usually I'm working holistically with a the business. They have a set of either challenges or problems. Sometimes they're looking at maybe opportunities and they need some insights planning. They need um, just some outside uh, perspective. Sometimes uh, it, it helps to have an outside perspective. So I come into the business. I look at their business and make sure that I'm providing a solution set to them that they can execute on that you know works within their wheelhouse their resources all the variables that they're working in with their specific business so i don't have any uh like plug and play type of uh, things i don't sell like ebooks or mastermind courses or any of that kind of stuff that you have to figure it out yourself i put out a ton of free content for people to do that on their own they can take what i say chew it up put it into their business as they want but when i work with a client it is all one-on-one -on -one holistic i'm deeply involved with that client i'm you know, in it with them. I'm kind of that entrepreneur to their side that's helping them with the clear eyes and not having a lot of that kind of political or emotional kind of attachment to a lot of things that entrepreneurs and Jimmy and Matt, you guys were probably both the test. You guys get caught in the weeds and the politics and the, you know, the relationships and all that aspect of it or the romantic aspects of your business. And a lot of times, it takes somebody from the outside to really look at things from a black and white perspective, apply it to the competitive landscape, all that you know, jazz on the outside risks, and put up a plan that's going to give you the best chance of success or the least amount of liability if you're trying to back out of some bad deal. Basically, Josh, you are the guy that tells us what we don't want to hear that's right for us. <laughs> yeah, in a way. I mean, it's it's over these last about seven years that I've been doing this, um, it you know, I think of myself as kind of like a business psychologist in a way where I'm working with um, a lot of people's very intimate parts of their lives. They spend more time than with their family a lot of times with their business. So it's also understanding how the entrepreneur thinks, understand what drives them, what maybe is their hot buttons and all that. And in an industry like sports nutrition or functional consumer packaged goods, I'll be honest, there's a lot of egos. So it's it, I've had a crash <laughs> course in the last seven years of uh, working with with the entrepreneurs, but I love it. I mean, it's this is uh, a passion of mine. I just so happen to be really interested in kind of like intent driven consumer packaged goods over just salty snacks or beverages. I've worked in those types of environments, but that's a different way of thinking. I like the intent driven. I like when somebody picks up a product and they go, I want to lose weight or I want to gain muscle or I want to get healthier or, or, you know, whatever that reason is. For me, my brain works better on creating kind of sequences to get people to a result, uh, you know, solve a challenge and, and kind of create an opportunity. So that's kind of why I've jumped into that kind of space over some I, other ones. I would love, maybe not now, maybe towards the end, but I'd love for you to share a very short story of maybe a nightmare situation that you've been in. Not now, because I know you probably have tons of them. But if we have time, I would love for, you know for you to share. I want to I want to talk about something that you posted the other day, and and maybe we can the three of us discuss this because I'm confident there are more people out there thinking the same thing. You posted something about uh, functional foods, the, 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 the dietary supplement category or companies that started their basis dietary supplements are moving into the functional food section, right? Uh, category or space. And I posted a comment 
and I said, because most of the dietary supplement companies are playing it safe because they're coming out with me too products. They're scared of the lawsuits. They are scared of the go away money from attorneys or, you know, all that crazy, the craziness. So they're playing it safe. And now our, our industry, okay. I can say our industry is moving into the functional foods. Why? Why do you see this? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty complex question. I think when you commented on that post, I mean, you had a specific viewpoint, which is not invalid. It was, um, in a sense, there was there's a lot of different kind of reasons behind this movement of what's going on. And, and I've, you know, one of the reasons why I moved to, to Austin, Texas, was I wanted to be closer to a Whole Foods headquarters. I wanted to be more in this where I kind of saw trends moving away from the caps, powders, pills, and into drinks, into uh, protein bars, snacks, all that. And also a lot of like the organic and natural and, and things that were blending. The silos were kind of going away. People were blending the categories together. And I thought, hey, what's a better place than the epicenter of, of kind of where this blending is happening in Whole Foods markets? And a lot of this is coming down to just behaviors of, of buyers and, and trying to meet that demand. Uh, you know, you touched on, Jimmy, the, the issue of caps, powders, pills, traditional sports nutrition brands not being as innovative or as risky or as kind of um, cutting edge on some of their formulations because of the litigious side of, of it where but, you could kind of move on that direction. And I totally agree. I mean, I think there's, there's obviously a, an issue with that going on, but there's also the element of a lot of these brands are seeing an opportunity and because there's some barriers of entry that have changed with the manufacturing side and the availability of like functional food and beverage type of manufacturers that are available to people, um, they have just kind of moved in that direction. A lot of brands that normally would have never touched those products because they weren't big enough, they didn't have the scale, um, they have moved in that because the minimum quantities have kind of moved down to make it make sense. They have national distribution with an Amazon or, or whatever. So they're able to fit some of, or, or kind of curtail some of those challenges that were around maybe 10 years ago when you did launch a protein bar or an energy drink or something like that, where you needed to have a very heavy distribution sales organization. Now you can kind of do it in a digital way if you're smart, um, but, a lot of brands are moving there, one, because it's just where the growth is at in the industry. There's um, your caps, powders, pills are, are somewhere in the low single digits uh, year over year on like a compounded annual growth rate. And then you have functional foods in the like the mid teens. So if you are getting at a five, like a five X return on your money, if you think like you have an opportunity to, to gain some of that extra market, you naturally move towards that because there's just a lot of competition you know we can we can dive into that side if we want to just with the idea of like just so many brands now there's so much competition it's just so hard to stand out in the crowd so how do you do that you go towards an area that you think is more of like a blue ocean or an opportunity section right my, my matt you want to chime in here because i have tons of questions <laughs> no go, go ahead i'm i'm learning just like everyone else i mean josh has a ton of information that that he can share and everybody you know i'm sure can gain a whole bunch of value from it but i know this is a topic that you really you know wanted to talk about jimmy so why don't you, uh, you know, ask another? I, my loyalty my loyalty is dietary supplements that's my loyalty are you saying that the guys Guys, right? I don't think any female owns a supplement company, okay? Are the guys who own the supplement companies, the dietary supplement companies that came out with the pre-workouts are now saying, I'm done with this? Now, here's, it's, a, it's a loaded question, so I'm going to try to make this a little, little smaller, not as loaded. Are we turning our backs on the sports nutrition? I mean, I think something that, that got us here. I think the idea of like what sports nutrition, like just that, just that word, or what like categorical definitions have been blurred. So I think that if you're thinking back ten or twenty years ago, like you know, strictly caps, powders, pills, I would say that yes, brands are turning their back on that aspect of the business. And, are, and, 
Go ahead. Are you saying that in three years there'll be no more pre-workouts? No, I, I still think there's a market for that. I think there's, it, it's just not um, at growing as much. You're having, most of the new entrants that are getting into the category are now looking at supplements or sports nutrition products much differently than we did when we started out. We thought of protein powders or fat burner caps or, um, you know, what a pre-workout powder, you know. Now, food is supplements in a way like the idea of a energy drink is a pre-workout the idea of a protein bar is your post-workout it's not so much that those are how we used to use them maybe a decade ago when i started in the industry it was you know a uh, sometimes it filled in the gaps on a meal if you needed something on the go or you know it wasn't so much used as like a, just a part of your day-to-day -day. like that's just an element that's in their day-to-day -day consumption of food it just so happens they want to be healthier and they want to be a little bit better than they used to be before. So they seek out that over a Snickers bar. They they seek a you know Quest bar. It's just it's kind of a uh, an evolution of people looking to get a little bit healthier. And the products that they seek seem to be where a lot of the growth at. So sports nutrition brands, traditional or not, in the sense of how they're built, they move towards that because they know that buyers now are you know, going in that direction, that, that they're seeking those as just a day-to-day -day lifestyle product. And somebody's going to fill that gap. And it might as well be the people that have the best intentions or the best understanding of an intent-driven, functional consumer package. Good, because you don't want to have a, and, and this is no knock on, you know, like a Hershey's or something. They have great brands that are healthier for you and better for you. But I think all of us would rather have a sports nutrition brand addressing those you know, shifts over I, a, a food brand. Right. But you just said it. There are companies out there that have been in that space for many, many years, like Mars bars. Now you got Mars protein, you got Mars this and that. Can, can, a, can a company that has been in the dietary supplement business fight Mars bars? See, I believe it's going to be a quick in and out trend because these major companies, these big 800 pound gorillas are just going to go buy the shelf space. That's what's been going on with the drinks. And you know what? They're going to take back their shelves and they're going to make their own functional foods. I personally believe that it's going to be a one and done. I think it actually goes in a, in a different direction. I mean, I, I definitely could see where you're, where you're going with that, Jimmy. But I think that say, you know, I'm building a brand and I come out with, you know, a bunch of different things, but I have a Are we losing Josh? Josh, you there? I didn't cut him off, Matt. I promise. No. <laughs> yeah. Neither did I. Maybe just he because a... he's not agreeing with me, it doesn't mean I cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Um, maybe he'll he'll uh, he'll come back. Right? We'll get him back. Yeah, he might have just had a, a bad connection. It's it's showing he's still there. Maybe yeah. maybe things are just lagging. Um, let's see. So tell me, we'll we'll get him back in. Where are you on this? I'm I'm of the If you disagree, I'm gonna cut you off too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm of the mindset that the consumer is becoming more educated. And you know what? Let me try and get him back now. So wait, hold hold on. I I I don't get it when you when everybody says the consumer is becoming more educated. Or, listen, the consumers become more educated, so they're changing category foods. No, see what what I'm thinking is the the direction of the supplement industry is going more towards functional foods. Not only because they're trying to tap into the market that is you know the everyday household member versus the the very niche side of the business being you know health and fitness. Because I think more people are focusing on their overall health, their well being, how they feel. 
you know, obviously generations are getting older and they're looking to, you know, live longer, longevity, uh, overall quality of life. And so Mm -hmm. I think I think the supplement industry is trying to tap into that, but also expand the reach of an audience that they can go to. I mean, back in the day when when supplement industries or, or supplement companies first started, you know, the, people thought of protein as it's it's a bodybuilder's thing. You know, if right. the only only right. the people who are, of us. who are, you know, in the trenches, in the gym, lifting heavy weights, they want to get big, they want to get bulky, get muscular, look like Arnold, they use protein. And then, you know, as the consumer gets more educated of why you actually need protein and the benefits other than building the quality lean mass, um, you know, I think that's why more people are looking towards – and I hate to use the the Snickers with protein or the Mars bar with protein because it's it's literally a glorified candy bar. But I guess you could say the same thing about yeah, hold on. some of the products exactly. that are on the market today. Think about it. Are we are we see we're we're going into if if and I say weeks I'm I'm part I am part of that nutrition dietary supplement family. Okay, so are you telling me that it's okay for us to expand? Josh, you back? Yeah, sorry, I'm. I- intermittent email or uh internet issues i don't know what's no going worries on. man no worries uh um <laughs> matt thought that i cut you off because you disagreed with me <laughs> <laughs> so so and then matt started disagreeing i was ready to cut him off too it was just but, gonna um, be the jimmy show from here on out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm, no jimmy show for me so <laughs> so what i want to say is are we saying are we saying that by the way, Matt, um, Josh, Matt agrees with you. Okay, so it's it's, and and I get what you guys are saying, but what I'm seeing seeing is our industry, and I'm going to say, like I said before, I'm part of this dietary supplement industry. Okay, this is my family. Are it's okay for us to go into the mass market? Okay, but when the mass market companies want to come into the dietary supplement market, we got a problem with it. Why is that? I mean, I think, and I was, I think what I was going when I was kind of before the internet uh, cut out was um, basically around the idea that where I kind of think this is going is, uh, is kind of beneficial to um, the family you've built, the family, because say you get a brand up great velocity at 20 or $30 million in protein bars or energy drinks or something like that. Well, a Kellogg's or a um, you know Kraft Heinz or Mondelez or something are now looking to either buy your brand out early or um, use it as like a venture or incubator type of a situation where then you're opened up to a whole different um, opportunity for these traditional you know supplement companies to get into because I mean, you probably know Jimmy you've been around enough that. Like getting money in the industry is tough. Like you don't have the available capital raising that you do if you are a food brand or Absolutely. you're a tech brand or anything like that. You tend to have to deal with not that great of vehicles to get money in. And it's you're kind of signing your life away because you need it for either inventory, extra inventory, whatever that growth is. You have to kind of put yourself out there. Well, now you have this interest of these big food brands, big beverage brands, whatever those are, they're interested in this new functional better for you kind of section and the brands that are doing it the best or could do it the best should be sports nutrition and supplement brands so they're looking at those as like acquisition targets so you have the ability to cash out honestly even more so it's that allure that carrot is even bigger than just the growth carrot the idea that maybe you can exit which is not all that normal in the industry you don't you can't point to a you know one every week like you can in in uh, food and beverage and stuff like that, it's not like you're seeing the, um, you know, the salvation type of deals all the time, or you're not seeing either like like Slim Fast and Glambia. There's not a lot of brands that go out and buy other brands about, in the industry. What about Dimatize? Who bought Dimatize? Yeah, Post. So Post. it's like, and and so you're seeing these brands have the ability to get outside of that, which is important. I think is in is is I love the it. maturation of the industry. I think it helps them get a better view a better reputation, a better equity in the overall consumer packaged goods industry. So though it might seem like turn your back on them and it, you know, I think being, you've been in the, around the block a few times, Jimmy, I think like you're, you're romantic about the category. You're romantic about like sports nutrition. I think that 
that idea is kind of thrown out the way. Like you, you made a comment earlier about like there's not women led like sports nutrition brands in their sense of like well, how we think of sports nutrition. No, but if you think like brands that are now uh, very much the new age supplement brands like a care of or like a ritual or like those types of like personalized nutrition, vitamin, mineral brands, they're all run by women now because right. they understand right. that's where kind of the market's going. So I think it's just this maturation. I think that people are the idea of what we think of the silo of sports nutrition or supplements or whatever is now just much broader. And that is, you know, a multitude of things cause that. But I think the reality is that's the world in which we play in today. So either you want to take advantage of the positivity of that, or it's the matter of, you know, this is terrible. I don't want to be involved with this. This is, you know, this, this isn't what I signed up for. So beauty fit, right? If I don't go into the functional foods play, do I go out of business? Leave me alone. No, no, I don't think you go okay. out of business. I think it's, I think a lot of people have this idea of like, it's zero sum game where it's like, it's either, it's binary. It's either yes or no, where, you know, retail's dying. That's the thing you always hear or whatever, where <laughs> retail's not dying. It's, not. it's, you know, it's either bad retail, like the middle that people don't want, or it's just bad operators or bad. In the same sense, like people can run a caps powders pills business very effectively it's obviously worked this well for a long time you might not have the growth ah. did he say something that you didn't like jimmy no, no. <laughs> i, I kind of like what he was saying i didn't touch anything <laughs> you know you know where my point was and I, when he comes back on um i i want to make I do believe the reason why I brought myself up with beauty fit, if I don't go into the functional foods uh, category, do I go out of business? And he says, no, I believe most of these companies have worn out their stay in the sports nutrition category and dietary supplement category and have no other place to go to expand because they've gone up and they're on their way down and the only way down is to jump on another ship I that's think, sailing out i think we're always going to have this constant inclusion with new trends it's hot for now i i think this whole keto thing i think that's that's another trend and you know you have people who get great results off of keto but at the end of the day it, here's my question. It's just another trend. Here, here, here's my question that I, I, I always bring this company up because the packaging is just something that I, I, I don't understand how they're doing it. Solgar, right? Mm -hmm. Josh. I know very well. Right. Josh, uh, you changed uh, scenery. I changed I see. locations. Yeah. Okay. So I I think I was in a quiet space in our um, in our apartment, and it actually was the farthest away from the uh, internet. So I think I was not I was doing it myself. I self inflicted wound. No worries, man. I, again, I was agreeing with you, so I didn't. I had no part of this one. What, what, what <laughs> I, I, I cut you out because you were agreeing with Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> what what I wanted what I said was what I wanted to say, and I and I I brought it up after you uh, you walked away from us. Um, was and i'm bringing myself up because i can only talk to talk about what i have i i mentioned if beauty fit didn't go into the functional foods would i go out of business and you said no and i believe that some of the dietary supplement companies or sports nutrition companies okay have no other play they've exhausted and over um worn out their stay in this category like they've gone up as far as they could you know some people have done the 20 million 30 million whatever that is and some done 500,000 okay in sales they've they've gone up they're coming down and they need to jump ship okay and that's where i feel most of these brands even the big brands they have gone in every single shelf. They have every bit of distribution in place. 
And now they're replacing the products, the existing products that they have with the functional foods. And I'm okay with that. I just see it's a it's a strategy. And I want to bring up a company that I so respect, okay? And it's dietary supplements, Solgar. Am I missing something from this company? Are they coming out with any functional foods or are they just still freaking vitamins? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you can you could definitely continue to go all in on, you know, vitamins, powders, caps, you know, whatever those are. I think to your point, in a way, it, it kind of transitions a little bit of the sense of like one of the other drivers of this whole like movement of functional foods is the like sales channels, like this idea that you now have grocery stores, convenience stores, uh, mass retailers, club accounts, all that now offering sections, healthier for you sections, active nutrition sections, whatever those retailers call those sections uh, in their specific area. So they're expanding that because, you know, what we talked about before, people are looking for those things. So you have this available shelf space in a, in a, like a channel that you never had really access to. If you think about it, like there was very little space uh, up until the last five or so years that was available to brands um, if they didn't create a product that was specific. We lost them. I think we lost them again. Yeah. <clears throat> but I, I, I see. It's, I it's see bad because I, I love what he has to say, you know. And it and it's always like right in the middle of like a good point that he's he, starting yeah. to make. I absolutely I, love what he has to say, and you know, and um, and I, I we got to we got to bring him on board again to to talk about you know maybe this just elaborate more on this and then some other topics. Um, it's you know, he and what he's saying is right because you know Beauty Fit was in Bed Bath and Beyond. Who who would have thought Bed Bath and Beyond would open? a side of their stores to sell dietary supplements right, right. Yeah. and um and and that's where i i believe you know josh josh is, is right what i was saying josh is think about this right bed bath and beyond right we're talking about curtains bedspreads pillows and silverware okay um and all of a sudden they lease out their own space to their own other company called Harmon Stores. And what do they do? Dietary supplements, shampoos, all personal items. And that that was a that, that was a an outlet that was never available to us. Obviously I jumped into that. <laughs> I took I, I took advantage of it. But again, that was something that no one would have thought back, you know, 10 years ago that we would have access to this distribution channel. And I agree with I agree with Josh. I think it's something that you know every company should consider. My problem, and I have a problem with this, is it's that jumping ship. And some of these guys in our category, in our in our business, weren't that all kosher. And they're jumping ship to muddy up the other category. And that's the problem. And you can call me a hater. I'm just laying it out there exactly how I see it. Because they're going after the one and done. There's two, there's two ways to run a business. You sell one time to everybody in the world and you shut it down. Because you know there's something going on. Okay, or you sell it once to a person to get the reorder to build a brand and then the reorders and then you create the distribution. Both are money makers. But which way does someone take? So is it is it an ethical choice? I don't know. I, I think we have to, and I'm trying to get Josh back on, um, I think we have to look at the evolution of our industry also. I mean, and, and how all of this came about. 
I mean, I'm I'm looking at it from the perspective of everyone wants to know how to live a longer, healthier life. Um, you know, stay out of the wheelchair, stay out of the nursing home, and and just have a quality of life where they can own their life. They don't have to depend on somebody else. So, who do the doctors and you know the mainstream population? Who do they look towards? They look towards the healthy and the fit individuals. So they say, what are these individuals doing that I'm not doing and how can I get to that point? And I think that's where people are more educated on nutrition and exercise. They get those two things down, hopefully first, and then they go into the supplement side of things, which moves into the functional food and beverages where, hey, if I can get in a higher amount of protein from from yogurt or I can get in my probiotics from something like a Greek yogurt, or if I can get this in from a food that you know I'm used to already eating or a beverage I'm used to consuming, I, I think that's just the, the nature of how the industry is evolving. Do I think that the functional food and beverage category will start to you know have a downward swing? It it, it very well could because I do think that it's it's a trend right now, but I don't think it's ever gonna go away. And it's the same thing with like supplements, like I don't think, let's just use you, Jimmy. I don't think beauty fit will ever go away just because functional foods and beverages are are a hot topic right now. There's there's still the need for the products. There's still a want for the products. People are still buying the products. Right. And, and I think of the functional foods almost as like another supplement. So rather than, uh, you know, while there's still, for the most part, a whole food options, I look at it as a supplement, like they're using this to get something else that that they're deficient in, I guess you could say. So if they're looking for something that's going to bring them in, you know, more protein, I look at that, even though it's a functional food, as more of a supplement. So I think it's it's just tying up loose ends where, you know, they want the whole food options, but they want the protein options. So let's combine them with one product. And you can, you know, get right. your stuff from your whole foods, your functional foods, your supplements, you know, protein bars, protein shakes, whatever the case may be. But I, that's just the direction that I see this going. But, and Josh, I want you to continue where, where, where um, Matt cut you off and hung up on you. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Are you telling me that, see, that functional food category and the labeling of that functional foods. Are you telling me that the five milligrams or the five IUs of vitamin D in the yogurt is going to make a big difference? No. You see what I'm saying? That's where that's where everybody. That's where I got a problem with it. You, you know that that's where I got a, a right there. Yes, that's where I got a problem with it. So we're calling it we're calling it functional foods. Excuse me, babe, can you can you plug this in? Okay. That's where I got a problem with functional foods. What is the benefit of the functional foods? Josh, can you help me here? I mean, I think Matt was touching on something that's probably pretty important around this idea of like functional foods and functional beverages. It's, just, it's relatability. It's I always kind of use this analogy where um, if you are – you know, Sally in Iowa, and you're used to eating McDonald's three or four days a week, and you want to get healthier, you're not going to go straight to this crazy regimen of vitamins and minerals and things that you like are not used to take. You're not used to taking pills and, and stuff, but you might be more willing to take something that is more relatable to you. It might be a, you know, a protein bar that resembles a candy bar, and that's your gateway drug in a way. That's like your way of getting involved with it. So you might be introduced that way. And there might be some drop off of people, you know, they just never really get to the next stage. But that is where a lot of people are entering the market. Then if they're interested in learning more and, and, and actually what is going to provide them a ton of benefits on vitamin D or the, the appropriate amount of probiotics or whatever that is and move outside of food and move towards like an actual supplement, then you're going to gain that by having them yes. get an entry point because you're not gonna, they're not going to go from A to Z. They need to go from A to D or, or C on that. And then they kind of kind of shift their own way. They're not going to be able to just, you know, Sally from Iowa is not going to just all of a sudden be chugging down protein drinks three times a week. She, she's still used to eating McDonald's. So you got to kind of ease those people into it. And this is 
a way that has been happening. Now, how you get those people to transition into it, that's, I think, people may, maybe aren't looking at that next step. Um, consciously, maybe subconsciously they are, like they realize if we have a protein bar and we also have supplements, maybe it helps them guide them into the ecosystem of our other products. But I think it's just, they see dollar signs and they go, okay, I want a piece of that. I don't think they're really thinking longer term, how do I get them into my ecosystem as they mature as customers in the market? So, you know, I think the idea of functional foods, like that's a very new term. I still think it's like fuzzy in terms of even what they consider a functional food or not. Like Listen. even an analyst perspective, like they look at that and like they, they add all kinds of vitamin fortified, this, that, like the category, if you look at it, the way that analysts look at it, it is like massively huge because of right. your, anything that has vitamins or probiotics or anything added fortified to it, that's right. a functional food where we're, we're thinking more like actual, like functional foods that are more geared towards like sport or a little bit, they're a little bit more even farther along than what an analyst would consider a functional food. Right. So if we, if we, if we had, we go back to pure protein bars, Metrex bars, those are functional foods. They've been around forever. Yeah. And that's where I'm saying, like, why all of a sudden we're all into this functional foods? And because you're because the chips, potato chips never had protein in them. Now they might have protein. Vitamin milk, uh, um, milk, vitamin D, fortified vitamin D. I grew up, I was that guy who would eat hot dogs and hamburgers and a gallon of milk a day and had abs because milk was good for me had vitamin D. Why all of a sudden the same foods that were in the grocery store, now you see on the labels of more supported with, they, they call out more of the vitamins and the protein. Like you go to a, um, a, a cereal, right? And it says only, you know, two, you know, three grams of carbs. Back in those days, that never existed. So now all of a sudden, these things these companies that are calling out their their strong the, the, the functional food side, okay, protein, carbs, you know, whatever that is, they're calling it out on the box or on the packaging. All of a sudden, they become functional foods. I mean, in a traditional sense, they are, but in the way that most people that are in deep into it probably not. Right. But I think that you're getting into this idea of the convenience generation, this idea that you want to have added things to it because it just helps. Like you don't want to think about it the way you used to, where you need to think, I need to eat this food for this vitamin or this, you know, whatever. Now it's like we want a little bit of kind of everything involved with it because it's easier to implement into our like convenient lifestyle, which, you know, some people could say that sways towards like a laziness aspect to it. But it's, and then the opposite side, we were talking about like with the call outs or whatever. I think this is probably drawn it way back to like the starting point, but you have, you know, this thing called the internet that got started and now everybody has all the information available to them uh, with their fingertips. So no longer did you have the gatekeepers of information and only if you read certain things, you could get that information. Now you have all this access to information, you know, you know, different lifestyle of diet choices, carbs, vitamins, minerals, sugar, what all that does. Now it could be information, misinformation, depending on which sources you believe, but you have all of this information. So then on the flip side, companies on the commercialization side right. need to market right. to those like criteria of purchasing, like what does the consumer care most about? And because there's so much information, they have to call out things, even if we, you know, purists might think, you know, that, that doesn't constitute a functional food or that doesn't constitute a functional beverage because it doesn't have, you know, 20 grams of protein. And that's like a thing that a lot of people point to, like on a protein bar, like 20 grams of protein means it's a protein bar. Like that's, the, that was the old way of thinking it. Now you have, you know, arguably the biggest protein bar in the category or the fastest, like RX bar that has 12 in there. And it's coming from an egg white. It's not coming from any you know, refined protein source in the sense of like a whey protein concentrate or an isolate or something like that. So it's, everything is just evolving in the way that people are defining words. They're not thinking about it in a purist standpoint. It's more of like now this blended new aged, you know, definition. So, so we can say, and I'm sure the three of us agree that the consumer is a lot more 
self-aware and a lot more educated on nutrition, correct? Yeah. Okay. Where did this stem from? Where did they stem from all this information that they were able to where, acquire? Where where did they get where are they getting all this information or past four, five years now? Which category are they getting this information from? Are they yeah, getting- I mean, they, you could trace. I mean, you could trace a lot of this back to you know bodybuilding.com. You know where right. you know that's kind of where early internet days. You know they were p- pumping out a bunch of of content that was speaking to a generation that now is in their prime of buying, like myself. That you know I didn't necessarily pick up the muscle and strength magazines or the flex magazines as much. I, I still was in that weird phase of in between, but like a lot of my information of why I got into what I got into was bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com at that time and still to this point is very much specialized on sports Absolutely. nutrition. You know what I mean? They're, I think three fourths of their revenue still comes from sports nutrition category products. So that's where a lot of the information is to your point to me. I mean, that's you, you tend to go where the most specialization that is the most where the most influence comes from. And then everything else kind of, you know, trees from that or, or kind of goes away from that direction. So we're still, you know, in a prideful so, way, you could still say like, you're, you, you know, you're the epicenter still of kind of what is happening. Now people are taking some of that information and reframing it in the sense of where the market is now. I use the analogy a lot with my clients of like, you have to play the chessboard for what it looks like at that time. You can't play the chessboard of what you played three or four games right. ago. You have to look at it and say, what moves are available to me based on the board? You know, is there this move, that move, that move, whatever it is. But that's kind of how people are looking at it now. They're taking maybe what these silos did really great for 10, 20, 30 years and flipping it on its head and applying it to the new situation, the new chessboard and saying, here's our new winning play. This is how we're going to we're going to win this game. So that's, you know, in the, in the sense of what you're saying, I mean, it, it still all stems from the same space. I mean, right. that's the purest I, space is still where it stems from. I'm not against this, this push of functional foods, but everybody's making it like it's new. Yeah, it's not new. No, it's I mean, not. It's, it's just it's not. the amount. I think the attention and the amount of brands, the amount of products that are available is new because going back to the point, I mean, it goes to buyer behavior one to the availability of like manufacturing and creating those products. Three, the available sales channels to get those products out because though the industry is very much digital, very much, you know, a lot of the sales are e-commerce. Now, when you're talking about on the go consumption, functional food, bunk, functional beverage, a lot of that's still done in the convenience, the, the grocery stores, the mass retailers, the drug stores. So now that those are available, it's kind of creating this perfect storm of just people getting in there because they know that's, if I'm going to make it, that is going to be where I'm going to make it. They're, they're kind of moving away from where there's already a ton of saturation. There's already a ton of brands that have like put their flag in the you know stand and said, we are number one. And moving into an area where you still have a lot of available space to, you also have a lot more ability to do um, proprietary things, which is unique to um, that, like trade secrets over a proprietary blend being negative in the sense now of sports nutrition, you have the ability to kind of create something that is unique in a sense to you. And it has a little bit more innovation to it because you have more available um, like items to move within. Like you have a different set of things to play with over the, you know, has to be uh, agreed upon by the FDA from 1994. It has to be there. This is, you know, these are the only ingredients or analog of ingredients you can use from. That's it. We're all playing the same a boat of ingredients that we could pick from. Now, there might be some lucky things that pop up here and there, but for the most part, it's still all the same materials we're using. Now, you move into food and beverage, you have much more combinations of things that you can use together that people haven't thought of or they haven't used in in the right manner or packaged it. There's still a lot more opportunity, I think, and that's where people are moving in that direction. It's kind of this perfect storm why you're seeing so much of it, and that's just bringing more attention. It's kind of this perpetuation of this kind of thing. The cycle is just happening over and over. And it's when it hits the top, I don't, 
I don't know. It hasn't, and, it, and it's still not. So I'm it not hasn't sure. even started. Yeah, it hasn't even started. I think it's still like you're not even having most of the major players really get into it from an investment standpoint, or from you know actually adding proper things to their legacy products. There's um, some talk recently with some of the investments, like with uh, Mondelez, with like their Oreo brand or, or their cookie brands. They're talking about they made an investment in a company called. Hmm. Off I, the top of my head, can't remember, I, but it's a, it's a probiotic it. brand. Um, they basically are going to add those ingredients into maybe a, an Oreo or something like, but in the proper way for gut health or what. So you're starting to see it just happening. I think you still probably have another three to five years before it hits like critical mass, where then you have every major CPG firm uh, portfolio having multiple kind of horses in each race. Um, you know, going to like the Pepsi. Coca-Cola thing. Like if you think about coconut water, you think about energy drinks, you think about protein, you think about uh, regular soft drinks, you think about uh, orange drink, you think anything, they have a player in each one. I think eventually that's where like these big right. CPG firms get to. They all have a horse in the race. It's not going to be, unfortunately, it's not going to be probably the sports nutrition brands that we know of today. They're going to be gobbled up and consolidated into probably some other CPG firm. I love it, man. This is, the, this is great. You know, I still get my questions and I still get my, um, you know, I, I question, I question everything. And, I, you know, sometimes that, that, may, that does me good. And sometimes it's just not so good. Um, I got two questions for you, Josh. First supplement you ever took. First supplement I ever took. So this is, this is, you know, a longstanding joke in the, uh, from the old bodybuilding.com days, but it was actually a, a cell tech by uh, Muscle Tech. So uh, I was a high school kid. Dad took me to a GNC. What do you think the GNC employees sold us? Back then? Cell Tech yeah. and Nitro Tech. That was what we got. That was what we got. Was and then we, you know, that was kind of uh, early days. It was all, you know, dad had the money. So he bought, he bought the products. It wasn't me that I kind of got to pick those things. And then when I got to college and I got into the bodybuilding.com thing, I started to to see new brands and brands I never heard of and, and that kind of thing. Was, but Was that Cell Tech that great flavor? I think it was grape. Yeah, yeah it was probably. I remember so it. <laughs> Matt, yeah. Matt, what about you? What was your first uh, supplement, dietary supplement? You know what? It was funny. At, at the time, um, I was active in athletics and I just couldn't take in enough calories. So I actually started getting the EAS uh, Myoplex, the, the <laughs> packets. And, you know, it was between that and the Metrex White Box meal replacement packets just to, you know, slam them down whenever I could just to take in enough calories. All right. You guys want to know what mine is? This you could say good. you could say no. <laughs> let's let's um, hear it. Let's hear it. I'm not going to know it though. It's going to be between, way before my no, time. No, no, no. You'll 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 know it because it's it was pretty big. But I was like in the beginning beginning stages. Bread. It was, it was the Rip Fuel by Twin Lab. Oh. Okay. And what was in it back then? Well, let me tell you what was in it. <laughs> well, let me tell you what it did to me. Okay. Um, I was on a two on two off with Clenbuterol back then. Okay. And I was taking these rip fuels. I was taking four a day, two and two. And I just loved them. Absolutely loved them. So on my fourth day, taking two and two, I decided to go three and three. And I'm driving. I had a 280ZX. I'm 300. Okay. And I'm riding in my, my 280ZX. And I'm going. I just moved to Florida. And I'm driving. And all of a sudden, my inner thigh started cramping. I got so dehydrated from rip fuels because it just sped up my metabolism. It had diuretics in it. I don't even remember what it had in it, but I was shaking like a leaf for days. <laughs> and um, I went out and bought more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because, you know, that whole cell tech thing and, and um, the myoplex, and you know what? They're great brands, right? Paul from, from, um, Iovate and you know Bill from um, from EAS. Obviously, they're they're swimming in their in their hundred dollar bills right now. But um, that they're amazing guys. But uh, I have I have another question for you, my friend. When do you think there will be a company launched that? we would turn around and say, holy shit, 
Why didn't we think of this? I think that idea of like maybe stumbling on something very simplistic, maybe I don't know if that's there anymore. I think within the today with just the amount of ideas that are out there and the amount of like incremental ideas that are out there, I don't know if we're ever going to kind of have one of those aha, like um, like the little umbrella drink things like, you know, the million dollar thing. Why didn't I think of, of something like that? I think it actually goes towards the next thing, the next, I think one that truly changes everything for the industry is this idea of like personalized nutrition and not in the sense of like what you're seeing today, this 1.0 gener you know, where it's, there's some input forms, there's some questionnaires where you, you put it together, the database pops out a query that says, you know, skew A, skew 1A, skew 2C and whatever those, that's right. your personalized nutrition. But in the sense of like having a fully integrated, connected, um, ecosystem of apps and, and wearables and things that go together where you know by your DNA, by your um, your conditions, your your specific condition, you know, as the conditions change outside, the environment changes outside, like what does your body need based around stress elements, whatever, and having the ability to have products that are on the go change as you need them is kind of where I think things go. Now, that's very like far out um, how that's going to go. But I think that is where people are looking at as the next frontier. That's the, you know, that makes us a smarter bionic human or whatever you want to call it. it. It's very scary to think about if you want to think the negative side of that. But I think I always tend to think of the positive side of things. I think if we're able to, you know, fundamentally live longer, live a better life because we eradicate certain diseases or eradicate certain things that happen because of diet, um, why not try it or why not see what happens? Now, there's obviously so many questions around regulations and data privacy and all that kind of stuff because you're gonna have to have maybe Apple and Amazon speak to each other that speaks to craft, that speaks, all these things need to speak together to create food and health solutions and you know all these things together. Um, you're gonna have to open up your uh, you know, your wearables and things that might be are implanted into you. Now, I mean, this is like futurist type of talk. Right. But I'm, I'm saying like, this is getting into the sense of like, you're going to look at that. And if you went to sleep today and you wake up to when that is like fully getting kind of to critical mass, you're going to be like, I don't recognize the industry anymore. The industry is, th there's so much blurring now. If we think the blurring is happening today, just look when all of a sudden, what's the definition of anything? It's all just enhancing our lives more and all of those things are going to work together to to do i it. i agree with you but the one thing that i don't see ever happening is mcdonald's burger king and wendy's and taco bell going out of business and that goes back to what you had mentioned before earlier in, in the broadcast about not taking someone from eating mcdonald's to giving them chicken and rice to go on, on a diet so what you just said i believe but that's the next level. That I don't think you, we will ever see someone going from eating two Big Macs and a Happy Meal, whatever that is, right, going into what you just said. So that's how – do, how do we resolve that? How do we resolve that part of the world that wants to live longer but doesn't want to take action? Yeah, I mean that's it's that's tough because that, that that we're talking now at this point like that that idea that I raised that thought that's radical in the sense that it's going to take decades of not only you know advancements and all the things I talked about and, and clearing of all the regulations or whatever, but it's also the uses like the actual percentage of of good results. Now, if you have a resounding amount of results that are proving that these things are changing the world it's a matter of time before everybody starts jumping on board. It might be another five or seven or 10 years. And there might be a small subsection, like to your point, Jimmy, I mean, I think that moves into a, a people and there's, there's anarchists, there's, you know, there's all these types of people that never believe there's always going to be a small percentage of, of people that are never going to comply with what's happening. But I think you have most people that if they start seeing results and they start seeing other people, living longer and living better lives and they have the means to do that, they're gonna they're gonna do that. I mean they're gonna make that decision. Well, now we, it's just, it might take them longer than a lot of the first adopters and a lot of the the people that 
uh, have the means to do it early on when it costs a lot of money. But, you know, I think eventually it happens. Well, we already had that, if you think about it. Um, not too long ago, I mean, five, six years ago, there were companies out there that were like, hey, go get your blood work done. And according to your blood work, we will customize your supplement regimen with a diet. Yeah. And and people would tell me this. I'm like, there's no such thing that you're going to get your own customized products. Because number one, it's, it's outrageous. The, the, the cost is outrageous. I say, you'll probably fall into a category, you know, one, two, or three. And that's what happened. But again, people had the opportunity to do this. Yeah, I think it's that that, that it's aspect. What, what I talked about with kind of the 1.0 of where it's even kind of progressed over the last five to six years, it's still very early. It's not. It's very static where you have brands that – you know, create these input forms, create these questionnaires. Um, GNC even has like a DNA test. You yes. go in and, and take that. Um, there's other brands that actually ask you to do blood work on a week to week or month to month basis. So they're starting to move in that direction where, where you want to get it to is like that all of everything's integrating together in a constant loop where like, you know, you're working out it, you know, your wearable that's in your body knows you're working out. You know that you also had a lot of stress in your job or whatever, where you have the normal like mush powder they gave you before now has 1.5 percent more of this or two percent more vitamins of this and it changes on the fly based around your external or internal things that are happening in your body so it's it's something that needs to be in a constant where they where you're talking about to now is very much like they're basically just creating a bunch of similar skews you know they have protein uh, 1A, protein 1B, protein 1C, protein, and based around the blood test, they're going to give you your maybe one that has a little bit more D vitamin because that's what you need based around your blood or you need, you know, but it's still in a controlled 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, you know, type of situation where I'm talking like there's just, it's just co like constantly changing based around your day-to-day -day life. And like, that's the only way to really get to the point where we like, truly I, I, evolve like personalization to like the extreme like all this other stuff is just a marketing thing and, and i've worked with um, a bunch of startups and, and consulted with a bunch of ones that are thinking about this idea and it's the idea of wrapping their heads around how to transition from 1.0 to 2.0 it's going to cost yeah hundreds of millions to billions of dollars to do that plus you need to get connected to government agencies and and right. different multinational huge portfolio brands like, you know, Amazon or, 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 you know, Apple or whatever those are that are going to now own the health space in the future. So it's these big problems that a lot of people are not ever, unfortunately, a lot of people are just not going to set out to, to do. That's not, as an entrepreneur, you don't wake up, there's not a lot of people that wake up every day and think that's the problem I want to solve because I think I'm the guy that can solve that problem. That's like, in Elon Musk, that's a you know that's somebody like one in a way out there. <laughs> yeah, wait, that's just gonna think about this so much. Most of us, you know, plain Jane entrepreneurs, we're looking at little opportunities where we could pick up 10, 20, 30, maybe we get up to 100 million, 200. You know, we're we're picking up the scraps of the of some of these other things. We're not looking at the next right you know trillion dollar idea or something well, like it's, that. So. It's gonna come down to accountability too, and I think going Jimmy, what you were saying about. How do you go from people who are eating two Big Macs and a Happy Meal to, you know, consuming healthy foods? I think I think the functional food and beverage category or, you know, space, whatever you want to call it, I think that is – it's kind of like breadcrumbs leading to a healthier lifestyle. So if you're used to eating, say, Doritos, now Quest has these uh, nacho tortilla chips, which is literally tastes just like a Dorito – and, you know, so they can transition from a bag of Doritos to maybe a bag of the, the Quest tortilla nacho chips, whatever they are. Or you go from having a, a yogurt that's full of sugar, you know, and, and I'm not saying that the sugar that is in it, if it's a fruit based, you know, yogurt is bad. But if you transition from that to something that has, you know, a, a Greek yogurt, if, which is a little bit healthier, I think it's incremental of of the changes that we're trying to have people make and and ultimately change their lifestyle so i mean in in the end i think it's only going to help the supplement industry because i think as more people go from the mcdonald's and wendy's and burger king mentality to you know I'm not saying make the switch over to chicken and brown rice or chicken and asparagus or or whatever 
But I think it's just going to constantly be a steady segue from poor lifestyle and behavioral, uh, you know, choices to newer. No, I agree. I agree. This is this is great, man. Josh, would you like to come on again to talk about some other topics <laughs> that I want to pick your brain? Yeah, I mean, I I, I love hearing myself talk. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would be glad to talk about any any subject that's in my wheelhouse. I'd be glad to talk about. You'll if you guys you know know me personally on any level. Whoever's listening knows that like when I, when there's subject matter that I don't know anything about, I I'm the quietest mouse in the room. I I listen. I I try to take in what I can get. But when we're talking about stuff that's in my wheelhouse, I'm I'm more than happy to add my insights, my opinions, my viewpoints, whatever that is. If they're wrong or not, I think people can. Uh, think about the situation and the scenarios a little bit differently. I definitely don't think my ideologies or my thought patterns are very similar to a lot of people that are in our space. So I, I put out content with you guys or, or myself that hopefully thought provokes a little people a little bit here and there, or at least gets people to expand their uh, interest, curiosity to learn a little bit more about you know the subject matter that we all love and 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 benefit from on a day to day basis. Matt, I'm going to give Josh last word. Anything you want to say? Not that I could think of. I mean, uh, I appreciate the time that you guys gave me today to, to, to talk about something that I'm obviously passionate about. And um, if anybody you know, grabs something from this and enjoys uh, hearing me talk about these uh, sometimes nerdy, complex uh, business side of, of a supplement world that they love, uh, I do put out a bunch of content. I don't know if you guys will, uh, you know, plug me in on that, but uh, you Absolutely. just search my name on Google. I'm, I'm, I show up all over the place, so it's not too hard to find me. You definitely can find me pretty easy. Matt? I got nothing, but guys, like like Josh said, if you enjoy his content or if you're a business that, that is looking for consulting or wants to pick someone's brain on maybe what the next step is for the transition of their business, how do they take it up a notch, Josh, Josh is the guy to go to. I mean, I, I recommend... Anyone and everyone who comes to me and says, do I know anybody, they they get recommended over to Josh immediately. But, I mean, he's got a YouTube channel, tons of great information over there. Even if you're just kind of dabbling in the supplement industry, if you want to get a little extra behind the scenes of, of stuff that's going on, different acquisitions, new product launches, innovation, whatever the case may be, Josh, Josh has his pulse on all of that. And I think he brings a ton of value, and I think it would definitely help you out either as an individual or a business. So with that being said, thank you again, Josh, for coming on. We definitely want to get you back on, uh, but just thank you for the time. No, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Josh, thank you so much. You know, I, uh, I don't endorse too many people, but I definitely endorse you. Appreciate that, Jimmy. Appreciate that. That means a lot. You have a